Understanding the controversy about residential ventilation. Before getting into the controversy about residential ventilation, it will help to have a general understanding of what we currently do to condition and ventilate our houses. A typical cold climate house will have an air handler that controls temperature. It will have supply ducts that provide conditioned air, either heated or cooled, to the spaces inside. And it will have return ducts that take air from the house and deliver it back to the air handler so that it can be conditioned. The warm climate house is similar, but the air handler is usually located in the attic. What's important to know about this is that this is a closed system. It's just a loop. All we're doing is heating or cooling the air that's already inside. We're not introducing any new exterior fresh air into the space. But obviously, exterior air gets inside our houses somehow. This happens a few different ways. For airflow to occur between two points, there must be both a pathway or opening connecting those two points and an air pressure difference. Both of these conditions must exist. If we have a pathway or connection, but no pressure difference, we won't have airflow. If we have a pressure difference, but no pathway, we won't have airflow either. In buildings, we have lots of pathways for air. Some of them are pathways that we include deliberately, like operable windows and doors, and some are not deliberate, like defects in our air control air, unsealed building connections, like where the wall meets the foundation or roof, and service penetrations that haven't been properly sealed. As for pressure differences, these can be caused by wind, temperature differences, or they can be mechanically induced. This third way of causing pressure differences, which causes us to bring exterior air into our homes, is gonna be the focus of the rest of this discussion. And it's what all the controversy is about. But it's important to note that for a long time, we didn't do anything deliberate to bring exterior fresh air into our houses. Air got inside simply from occupants opening windows or doors or from whatever came through defects in the enclosure from wind and temperature differences. Now we introduce fresh air into our homes, fresh air, with some kind of ventilation system. The most common approach is called exhaust-only ventilation. It works by using some kind of fan to exhaust air from a space, which causes the space to become negatively pressurized which in turn causes infiltration through defects in the air control layer to compensate for the air being exhausted by the fan. So air out equals air in. If we use a fan to exhaust X amount of air from a space, we know that the same amount of air will infiltrate the interior somewhere. The fans we most commonly use to do this are bathroom fans, but range hoods and dryer exhausts work the same way. The point is, we create a pressure difference on purpose, and we do it for two reasons. One is to remove specific pollutants from a space, and the other is to encourage air change with the exterior. These only introduce exterior air into a space when they're operating, though. So we can either just get our fresh air whenever occupants happen to have the fans on, or we can set them up on a timer to exhaust a certain amount of air every hour we typically choose a bathroom fan to do this. Now, without getting into too much of the nuance here, you've probably already thought of a few really good reasons why this approach is problematic. Mainly, we're not really all that sure where the exterior air is coming from and how clean it really is. The exterior air might also be uncomfortably or even dangerously humid or it might be too hot or too cold, and we're filtering it through our building enclosure. A nice alternative to exhaust-only ventilation is to provide balanced ventilation. There are a bunch of ways of doing this, but the simplest approach is simply to deliver outdoor air to the return side of the air handler. We can do this with a fan and a motorized damper, and we couple its operation with a bathroom fan so that we bring in the same amount of air that we exhaust out. Another way of providing balanced ventilation is to install an ERV. 
This equipment expels interior air to the outside and brings in new exterior air inside. The nice thing about ERVs is they precondition the incoming air by making it more similar to the air that's already inside. But the main advantage is the ventilation components. We know exactly where the fresh air is coming from. Now let's get to the controversy, which has to do not so much with the way we introduce exterior air into our enclosures, but the rate at which we do so. The IRC, or International Residential Code, tells us to generate the recommended cubic feet per minute by multiplying the home's area in square feet by 0.01 and by multiplying the number of bedrooms plus one by 7.5. The first term is based on the house and the second term is based on occupancy. So, a 2,000 square foot house with three bedrooms would require 20 CFM for the house plus 30 CFM for the occupants, which is 50 CFM total. But the IRC is great in that it also provides a 30% credit for using balanced ventilation rather than exhaust only ventilation. That's a pretty sensible trade-off. We can reduce the ventilation rate when we exercise more control over the air that we're bringing into the space. In any case, we can reduce the ventilation rate in our hypothetical home from 50 CFM to 35 CFM. Now that's the method outlined in the building code. ASHRAE's recommendations are substantially higher. ASHRAE recommends multiplying the area of the house by 0.03 rather than 0.01. So if we run the calculation for our same 2,000 square foot, three bedroom house, we'd require 60 CFM for the house plus 30 CFM for the occupants for a total of 90 CFM with no credit for balanced ventilation. So if we ventilate our hypothetical house according to ASHRAE, that rate is about two and a half times larger than the IRC recommendation. And this difference is exaggerated even more in larger houses. So if our same three bedroom house were 3,000 square feet instead of 2,000 square feet, the building code would have us provide 42 CFM and ASHRAE would recommend 120 which is absolutely enormous. So let's talk about why this is so controversial. Many people kind of describe it as a health versus energy thing. People who prioritize human health want high ventilation rates, and people who prioritize energy efficiency want lower ventilation rates. This is because the more exterior air we bring into a space, the more we have to condition that air, and that requires energy, a lot of it sometimes. Now, I think this health energy delineation is actually kind of an unfair characterization of both positions because, of course, everyone involved cares about both health and energy efficiency. The real issue is that they disagree on what conclusions to draw based on what we know about buildings and what we know about people. But it's generally the case that people arguing for the higher ASHRAE rate are doing so because they believe higher ventilation rates are better for occupant health. Many of them certainly concede that there are energy penalties to high ventilation rates, but they prioritize health and view the research connecting higher ventilation rates with better health outcomes as persuasive. I do not. I recommend following the ventilation rate set forth in the IRC, not ASHRAE. I am not persuaded by the research connecting higher ventilation rates with occupant health, and in my capacity as a building scientist, I'm very concerned about higher ventilation rates worsening interior conditions by increasing relative humidity and putting the building itself at risk and creating new indoor air quality problems, especially mold. Now, generally, I think it's pretty clear that ventilation rates are too blunt an instrument to use as a proxy for human health. It matters where the ventilation air comes from, it matters how much of it we actually get, and it matters what pollutants we bring into our buildings in the first place. The health research tends not to take this complexity into account. And for most of the time we've been building, we've either had no mechanical ventilation at all or we've had exhaust only ventilation with the makeup air coming from wherever. We don't know where it's coming from. It's really hard to draw meaningful conclusions based on that. 
There's, of course, much more nuance to the debate than just this, and although I obviously think that I'm right, I really don't want to be unfair in my characterization of the opposing position. This is currently playing out among very smart, very well-meaning people, and it will be really interesting to see where we end up. In the meantime, pretty much everyone agrees that balanced ventilation is a better approach than exhaust-only ventilation, especially for indoor air quality, and encouraging our clients to pursue this option is a really good idea.